and welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah and I'm a princess in process. Woo woo! One year, one trip, one bucket list. In a couple of days I'm going to leave all my life to go on a trip all around Asia for one year. So here I am with the eighth place I really 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 want to go. Number eight, the Marina Bay Sand and its infinity pool in Singapore. So of course there is a ton of things to do in Singapore, like Lindu India, Chinatown, the Botanic Gardens, and so on and so on. But let's face it, can you imagine just floating on top of Singapore's skyline? It's like you're just swimming on the sky, and I really want to experience that. Plus, hey, you should treat yourself. Number seven, Kowloon and the Grand Canyon of Hong Kong. Obviously, I will never be able to see the original Kowloon, you know, the famous walled city, very narrow, because it has been destroyed in 93, but the Kowloon area still have some leftover of those days. You still find the same atmosphere. On the other side of the spectrum, there is the Grand Canyon. I'm doing that because it's kind of small, but it's still really beautiful and it's another side of Hong Kong. Usually when people think of Hong Kong they think of the skyline, all the business, the people all around the bay, but there is more than that. Number six, Vietnam and the Along Bay. It's a world heritage in its coastline. It is breathtakingly beautiful, the seascape, the limestone mountains, the floating village and most of all the floating vendors. It really really is the typical image you have of Vietnam and I really want to see it. Number five, let's stay in Southeast Asia and move to Cambodia and more specifically Angkor Wat. Same again, Wall Heritage UNESCO site and I mean who never dreamed about going to Angkor Wat? I know they're gonna have a lot, lot, lot of tourists but still, I hope I can manage to run away from the main site to discover little temples around Angkor Wat. Cross fingers? Number four, Taiwan. And more specifically, I really want to go to the Ping Shi Lantern Festival. It looks beautiful, magic. It's around Chinese New Year and I hope I can make it. But more than that, there is Taiwanese food. Can we talk about the night markets, the street food and everything? Everything looks delicious, I just can't wait to try them all! Number three on my list, China. You can't go to Asia without visiting China. You have Beijing, the Great Wall of China, the Forbidden City, the Tiananmen Square, Shanghai, Hangzhou, Suzhou, and so many places to see. But where I personally really, really want to go, to Guilin, the Zhangjie Park, and the Fenghuan Village. Please excuse my Chinese pronunciation. So, Guilin, it's beautiful from the picture I saw actually. You have the Li River with the mountain, the reflection. It's rural China. You have the rice paddies, the rice terrace. It's just one of the most beautiful, watery wonder. And I just love wandering. I love places near water. Definitely on my list. The Zanjaji Park is one of the biggest and more well-known national forest park in China. I mean, you have the Tiananmen Mountains with streams and caves and a huge dense forest. It's really great for walking through it, go hiking. And in that park, you can also find the longest and highest glass bridge. And the Fengwei village, well, do you watch dramas or old Chinese movies? Can you see those little town with wooden house near a river? Yeah, that's Fenghuan. Can you imagine it at night with all the lanterns light up, the reflection on the water, the colors of the houses? I can't resist to see beautiful stuff. Who can? Number two, South Korea. Okay, let's just get straight. I am a huge K fan stuff. Should be Korean food, Korean music, and not only pop but also the hip hop scene, the indie, the rock, the entertainment, the dramas, the movies, all that good stuff. Make me really want to see and experience Korea. 
by myself. Seoul is obviously on my list, but not only. I really want to go to Busan and see the Gamshan village with all those multicolored house and the street art. I mean, it's so pretty. The red and the yellows and the blues on this little mountain. You have the Suwon city too, which is the only walled city of Korea. You have the fortress and you have the antique palace inside it. By the way, it's also a World Heritage UNESCO site. Jeju, the island, I mean, this is Korea Hawaii. Plus the food is just delicious all around Korea. So I want to try and taste everything. And now, the number one, the ultimate dream of my life, Japan. A few minutes ago, I told you that I'm a huge Korean entertainment fan. Well, that's nothing compared to Japan, like literally nothing. Because must be animes, dramas, movies, mangas, literature, tales, food, TV entertainment, music, and so on and so on and so on. My list of things to see and do in Japan is just so long. But if I have to name just a few, I would say Going to Kyoto during full season, I can Momijigari and visit all the temple with the maple leaf being all red and yellow. Going to the winter mastery, such as Chichibu near Tokyo, visiting the Ghibli Museum, the Fox Village, the Ninja Village, Tokyo obviously, the Honsen, going up to the north of the country for winter time and see the snow and the food. I want to eat dangos, ramen, kobe beef, tonkatsu, katsudon, everything with rice, oh! and matcha and pokies. I freaking love pokies. Pokies are like my ultimate snack and matcha, everything which has a matcha flavor, I love it. Like if you check my Instagram actually, you're gonna see so many stuff with matcha. So if I am in Japan, I can have everything matcha. I just can't wait. <sighs> I just can't contain my excitement right now, so I, I need to calm down because it must be really annoying on camera. But I'm going to bring you with me, showing you around what I'm doing. I hope that reality reached expectation or very close to it. And I will see you next time for the departure. Bye bye.